Hello, hello. It is Sarah Divinely You. Welcome back to Astrology and Energies for pretty much the end of April into May. And I'm doing this because we don't have a lot of major transits this week of the 23rd through the 27th. Um, and so I kind of want to like a bridge um, April into May a little bit. Um, because just because we don't have a lot of transits going on this particular week, we are in between eclipses um, and we are in between like a lot of big things happening. So honestly, like take advantage of this week where we don't have a lot of major transits because May will kick it up yet again. Um, and so we just had the solar eclipse at 29 Aries. Um on the 19th and then we now are of course in mercury retrograde mercury and gatorade mercury in the microwave however you define mercury retrograde however it is in taurus and it was inching up on a conjunction with uranus and taurus um uranus of course being the dispositor or sort of the um uh leader of or the ruler of Pluto in Aquarius because uh, Uranus rules Aquarius. Um, and so I'm going to talk about some of the transits and the energies, of course, dealing with the overwhelm. And then I also have a bonus for you at the end of this video. So um, pay attention for that. Let's get into this. Okay. So the overview, like I said, we are in between a lot of things. So the energy is still very overwhelming. There is still a lot of behind the scenes sort of things going on, but we don't have a lot of major transits again this last week of April. Um, however, that will change very rapidly in May. <laughs> so hang on to your, hang on to your seats, right? Um, okay. So of course we're between eclipses. The net, the lunar eclipse in Scorpio is on May 5th. Um, you know, it's at 14 degrees Scorpio. So if you have planets around those degrees or even in 14 degrees of Taurus or Leo or Aquarius, um, you may feel the effects more greatly. I mean, we're all feeling the effects of eclipses. It's just how they operate. But of course, anything within the fixed signs or even the water signs of Pisces and Cancer um, may feel this eclipse. Let me enlarge my screen for myself a little bit further. Uh, we are in retrogrades. Um, we currently have Mercury in retrograde. We're in retrogrades and they will continue until January of 2024 at this point because Mercury, Pluto will follow and then so on and so forth. And uh, of course, Mercury retrogrades three to four times a year. I believe it's four times this year. We finished off a Mercury retrograde at the beginning of 2023 and we will end with a retrograde at the end of 2023. Um, okay, Pluto is going to retrograde starting on May 5th. First, um, and it will go back into Capricorn on June 11th. Um, so, and it will stay there until January 2024. Now, that being said, and, and the fact that we're sort of halfway through this first round of Pluto and Aquarius, we already know this energy now, like our, 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 our state of mind, our, um, you know, the, the collective as a whole, like we've already seen this. So we won't really feel the difference per se, but we'll kind of go back to Pluto and Capricorn with the knowledge of this first 11 and a half weeks of Pluto in Aquarius. Um, and so, yes, it's going back, but honestly, it, it's now we're going to go back and see like the, the Capricorn perspective, Capricorn Pluto from the perspective of having Pluto in Aquarius. Um, and so it's not going to feel the same as Pluto and Capricorn for the last 15 or so years. Um, and then I do want to talk about Uranus opposition. Um, this is a once in a lifetime transit that happens to be affecting me and several other people that I know are within my, um, following. Um, so I kind of want to talk about it in this video just a little bit. Um, okay. So we're in Taurus season. This is fixed earth. Um, and so <laughs> It's creature comforts, it's money, it's self-worth, it's value. Um, uh, Taurus is ruled by Venus. So um, it's also ruler of the throat chakra. Um, and so not the throat chakra necessarily, but the throat of our body. 
Um, and so, you know, speaking, however, this Mercury retrograde is going to make communication glitchy uh, and things like that. It's also Taurus is money and finances. And so, you know, you may notice some weirdness in your personal finances, but we're also going to see um shifts around the money in our financial systems and structures because again this is cleaning up from pluto and capricorn which is systems and structures and governments and things like that um and so uh with mercury retrograde we're kind of um forced to sort of relook at these areas um and so there's that uh on the 27th yep uh, Mars will square uh, Chiron and Aries. And this is after we've had Venus conjunct Chiron, Jupiter conjunct Chiron, the sun conjunct Chiron, Mercury conjunct Chiron, like all of these things. So Chiron's sitting out in Aries. It's really having us focus on that I am um, and, you know, your, your, your uh, Chiron's a wounded healer. So it's, it's who you are, what your wounding is. And how you intend on sort of moving forward using your healing uh, as a way of catapulting yourself forward. Um, this is, again, back to that I am energy that I've been talking about in several videos. Um, and then now through October 11th, Pluto is squaring the nodes. This is an ongoing transit from now until Pluto goes direct in October. Um, and so this is a dynamic in that the square begins with the nodes in North Node Taurus, South Node Scorpio. So where we're going um, is North Node, South Node is where we've been. And Scorpio is like, uh, you know, it's fixed water versus um, North Node in Taurus, which is your value, your worth and all of those things. But then um, as Pluto is in retrograde and it shifts back into Capricorn, the nodes will make their shift into 29 degrees of Aries and Libra. So North node Aries, South node Libra. Um, and so I talked about this last week and that's what makes this a very long transit is that um, the nodes move counterclockwise through the Zodiac and Pluto is slow and going retrograde. Uh, and so it, it, it's it's going to sit there for a while. This really speaks to transformation, transcendence, transmutation, lots of change, lots of opportunity to for, re, for all of us, each of us to step into our own um, on a grand scale. Um, and so this is what making this is what is making 2023 a very pivotal year. Um, and then on, let's see, 5, 1 through 10, 11, Pluto will go retrograde. Um, what else we got? 5, 5, we'll have the lunar eclipse. That's 14 Scorpio. This is the last eclipse of these nodal positions. Um, and so our next eclipses, uh, which will be in, I think, October, September, October, um, will be our next eclipses and those will be in Libra and Aries. Um, yes, the solar eclipse was in Aries, but it was working with the North node in Taurus. So yes, it was in Aries, but technically it was operating on the North node, Taurus, South node, Scorpio axis. Um, so by five, we'll have that final lunar eclipse, big releases, uh, whatever like wounding you're you're hanging on to that's keeping you from being your highest and happiest and and boldest and all of the things uh it, it's got to go if it didn't go with that solar eclipse it, it's 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 gonna gonna go um you can really make some powerful shifts with these eclipses also that aries um solar eclipse that we just had that energy is powerful it's going to be with us for a very long time um into 2024 um that energy so these eclipses have uh what i like to call sort of a um a ripple effect in that they occur but sometimes we do we don't see the result or the 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 um manifestation or the the sort of 3d uh activation i suppose or or like we don't see the tangible there we go that's a good word uh result of those um for you know anywhere from um, six months to a year after they occur um and that aries one was very powerful so hopefully you set some really grand standard um uh intentions during that 
Um, on the 16th of May, Jupiter moves into Taurus. So fixed signs, yay. Um, uh, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius. We've been through Saturn in uh, Aquarius up until March of this year. And now we are finally going to get Jupiter in a fixed sign to really help us expand. Um, I definitely don't align with Jupiter being the Santa Claus planet. I think there's always work to be done in order to get the results you want, but this is where it can get amplified uh, and expanded with Jupiter in a fixed earth sign um, for your finances, for your self-worth, so for your value um, and all those Venetian qualities we all love and um, all of that. Okay, the moon on this day, it's starting in Gemini. It's going to transit itself to Virgo. Um, and so we will, of course, have like moon transiting. I have started my moon video series. It comes out pretty much every time the moon makes a change. Um, I post a video and or post depending on what platform you are on. Um, but uh, it gives you the moon and things to maybe a couple things to expect, perhaps some journaling prompts. Um, and an essential oil or aromatherapy to support you through it. Um, and so uh, hopefully that aligns. I'd love for you to comment on those if you are seeing them and let me know if you are loving them, if they're aligning, um, if they're supportive um, and all of that. Um, things to do, of course, the energies continue to be overwhelming. Again, just because we do not have any major transits this week does not mean that we aren't going through a lot of change. We should really kind of um, um, uh, sort of take in this week where we don't have a lot of major activity um, to really uh, take the time to integrate and embody the things that are occurring for us in this time and space. Um, of course, being gentle and compassionate, um, understanding, like knowing that we're all kind of um, in this mess together, that this all is happening for all of us. Um, I just realized my devices are not on do not disturb. Um, so I don't want to be interrupted. Um, so being gentle, being compassionate with yourself, with others around you, being flexible, going with the flow, knowing that unexpected anything can really happen on a dime, um, which is seemingly very stressful. Um, but also just knowing that we're all kind of going through this sort of, you know, anything unexpected could happen at any time. <laughs> Um, get yourself grounded. Uh, I spent a good chunk of this weekend, not only building the chair that I'm sitting in, but I was working on, um, a, a project in the garage and, um, sanding down some furniture, getting ready to repaint that furniture, um, you know, things like that, uh, having some good nutrient, nourishing food, um, and things like that as also creature comforts. I mean, don't be like, don't shame yourself for wanting to indulge. Um, I feel like that just counter effects everything when you kind of self beat yourself up for eating cake or eating cookies or eating M&Ms. Um, <laughs> we just got some, uh, they were, um, caramel cold brew M&Ms. Well, let me just tell you, cause I went, to, I hadn't eaten them yet. I was eating another type of chocolate that we had in the house. And I went to try one of these caramel cold brew M&Ms last night. And I, was, I looked at my mom and I was like, well, are they any good? And she's like, you, you really shouldn't eat one. I popped two. <laughs> the first bite, I was like, eh. and then all of a sudden the coffee flavor. And I was like, oh, I shouldn't have eaten those because damn, those are good. However, I'm going to indulge in these damn M&Ms. First of all, we will probably never find them again because it was like a ram random find at the grocery store, right? And you kind of have to take advantage of those when you find like the random finds at the grocery store. But my point in saying all of that is that I am not mad at myself for trying these M&Ms. I'm not mad that I bought two bags. <laughs> in fact, I'm kind of happy that I did um, because I'm pretty sure if I hadn't bought two bags, we'd be fighting over them in this house. Anyway, my point is, is that don't, don't shame on yourself for indulging in good food. Um, it is what it is. Everything we are experiencing right now, um, you know, green juice and all of that is not going, it may help you. I mean, I'm not saying that it won't. Like if you do green juice, you do you. I'm not criticizing or judging. I'm saying that if you are indulging in your favorite things, your pasta with white sauce, your um, pizza, your whatever it is that you're indulging in, a good, just juicy um, bacon cheeseburger, all of those things. 
Okay. Indulging in those things is necessary. We are going through a fuck ton of emotionally overwhelming energy. Okay. And I also have a theory that at some point in life, Oreos may not exist. Um, and so I, I, I want to enjoy Oreos while I can, or M&Ms may not exist. And I want to enjoy M&Ms while I can. And I think that we should all do that. So while I say be prep, be, be prepping, be, you know, nutritionally conscious, um, get your physical activity. I'm also very much about this tour season being about creature comforts, um, and making sure that we are self-caring and self-indulging and not, um, shaming ourselves for that shit because it's important and it's necessary. Um, okay. So enough of my Taurus soapbox. Uh, only you can clear the crap that is keeping you held back. So only you can change that. Only you can, you know, make the decisions to not let that thing affect you anymore. Um, and then only you can catapult yourself forward. I mean, this is pretty simple. I, I, I mean, full transparency, I live in a place where I'm not happy, which is very strange because I have lived in cities where I've been pretty content for the past 20 plus years. And now I live in a small town where I don't have public transit and I don't have access to a lot of things. And uh, it's been really compromising for me, but there's a reason why I'm here and I get that. Um, and that, that there's a part of it that is definitely necessary and having a garage to um, work on a project is one of those things. Having the space to be able to invest in a grill uh, is one of those things. So it's like there's bullshit that can hold you back at every stop, right? You can victimize yourself in any capacity that you're in, right? But you can also thrive and, you know... Um, the last few years has been hard for all of us in some way, in every, you know, in different ways, but there's also been opportunities for a bunch, you know, for us to grow and for us to thrive where we're planted and thrive through circumstances. And so I really invite you to, um, you know, think that through, think about, you know, the ways that you've thrived or the ways that you've learned or the ways that you've grown through the last few years. And if your circumstances, you know, in your opinion, suck in the moment, Think about ways that they don't suck, right? Think about ways that they're actually benefiting you um, to be where you are or experiencing the thing that you're experiencing. There's a lesson in everything. And I'm sort of obnoxiously a believer in that because I'm like, okay, there's something in that for us to learn and grow from. All right, let's talk about this Uranus opposition. This is a once in a lifetime transit. People are experiencing a Uranus opposition all the time. However, what's unique about this one is that we are supported by Pluto in Aquarius. Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius. Pluto happens to be in Aquarius. Um, and we have Uranus currently at 17 degrees Taurus. Um, he'll make its way or she'll make its way to 23 degrees Taurus and then retrograde back to 19 um, and then move forward again. So between now and May of 2024, if you were born between November 14th, 1978 and December 13th, 1979, your Uranus is at about uh, anywhere from 17 to 23 degrees of Scorpio. Okay. And we've talked about this. This is so funny because, of course, we have the nodes at Taurus and Scorpio. Um, and so we're experiencing this Uranus opposition. And we're going to get like three hits of it, right? Because Uranus is going to, um, from 19 to 23 degrees, you will get three hits of it. Um, and so uh, because as Uranus transits forward to 23 degrees, um, we'll get one hit. So if you're at 19, between 19 and 23 degrees, you're going to get one hit as Uranus goes forward. As it retrogrades, it's going to retrograde past 23 and back down to 19. And then it will uh, go direct in January of 2024. And it will um, surpass, of course, 23 degrees by May of 2024. So why is this unique? And why am I saying this? Because I look at my analytics and I look who watches my content. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I also happen to be in this range of um, people experiencing this uh, transit right now. So we get this once in a lifetime transit of Uranus opposition. This is all about rebelliousness. Um, this is all about 
uh, life-changing opportunities, life-changing events. Um, some might call this the midlife crisis. I do not align with this at all. I do not align with the midlife crisis because I don't think it's a crisis to step into your own version of yourself. Uranus is Aquarius. Um, it's demanding authenticity. It's asking you to, are you good with your current life? Are you bored as crap? Are you, you know, are you really excited about your life? If not, you're honest, it's going to, um, you know, find, help you find a way to be excited about your life, doing the things you want to do. Are you wanting to really teach and create and all of the things, um, you're honest is really that opposition is going to, um, support you in that i do feel like this is supported by pluto and aquarius again uranus rules aquarius pluto happens to rule scorpio uh and so of course the iranians uh the the scorpio uranus um folks are being you know very affected by pluto in aquarius so i think this is really interesting um scorpio and aquarius do square each other um so pluto will eventually square your uranus if you fit into this category um so that'll be fun. Uh, of course, if we're at 19 and 23 degrees, it'll be about 10 or 15 years before uh, Pluto gets to that 19-ish degree point in Aquarius, but you can look forward to it. <laughs> um, and then, uh, so here's what I did. If you're very curious about your uh, Uranus opposition or anything else related to your birth chart, if you've seen your birth chart, if you haven't seen your birth chart, but you're super curious, you've been listening to my videos, and you really want to find out more. There is a link in the description box below to my Calendly um, appointment uh, the thing where you can schedule uh, to work with me so I can look at your birth chart. I can talk to you about this Uranus opposition. I think there's some other dynamics about it too. For example, if you're Uranus conjunction moon um, or other aspects or other uh, planet placements that you may have in Scorpio, um, that could be really interesting to know because if you happen to have it uh, conjunct your moon, you may be getting some very vivid dreams, um, some psychic premonitions. You may be seeing some things um, noticing some synchronicities and things like that that are kind of mind-blowing and, and probably maybe like making you feel uncomfortable um this is this is kind of normal scorpio moons tend to have um psychic uh emp empathic capabilities um and so uh anyway so you can click the link in the description box below you can schedule an appointment with me and we can look at your birth chart um i can talk to you about your uranus opposition and how it may um be working in your natal chart so there's that all right there we go so that is this week again this week ahead 23rd through the 30th or so is fairly slow um, there's not a lot of major activity. However, again, we are between equip eclipses. Uh, and so there will definitely be, um, you know, a lot of tying up loose ends, finishing up, prepping for the new, all of the things. And so, but yeah, please feel free to book a reading with me. I'm happy to work with you. Again, I have a coaching background, uh, per, you know, personal development background. Um, I've, you know, worked with spiritual mentors. I've, act, you know, I'm, I do have my Reiki uh, certification so I can do some energy work on you um, and things like that and uh, so I'm happy to look at your chart and support you in whatever it is and even if you don't have a Uranus opposition and you still want to work with me obviously you can click the link and book a reading with me happy to work with you um, so please feel free to join me on my Instagram currently it's Sarah Divinely You that could change that is subject to change as Uranus or excuse me Pluto is squaring my ascendant uh, so you never know what I'm going to do in the next month <laughs> I'm glad you're along for the ride and enjoying the journey with me with my Aquarius Scorpionic self. And I will talk to you on the next video. Bye.